Well, first of all, I'd just like to say how honored I am to be here. It's always been a lifelong dream of mine to be able to evaluate livestock in this arena where so many greats have before. We get into our first prospect heifer class, and it's just a single entry, but I think this heifer could stand a lot of, a lot of competition. She's a long extended type of female that's ex extra clean and feminine about her front end. I really appreciate how smooth she is into, through the point of her shoulder and how she blends into a round four rib. You know, maybe we could just relax this heifer in terms of her angles, but a heifer that certainly offers a lot of great future on down the road for the young man. Let's give him a big round of applause. Results of our first class 901 Sovereign Prospect Heifers, born in 2017. First place, 4617, Almosta Farms, Morgan. Almosta Farms, Magnet, Nebraska. Up next, second class within this division, class 902 Sovereign Heifers, born in 2016. Three entries after this division championship.
we get into this class of sovereign market heifers, and there's certainly a very, very complete female to go ahead and start off the class. This is a sound of structured female that you really have to appreciate in terms of how she's laid back in the angle of her shoulder. She comes very square down to her knee, feeds into a round, robust rib cage. She comes level and square out of her hip. I really appreciate how she handles and utilizes her hip and hind leg. And on top of that, she's a heavy muscled female that certainly offers a cutability advantage over the one directly below her. The heifer that's going to go ahead and come out in second is certainly a thick, heavy muscled type of a female that's extremely bold and opened up there in her fore rib, which allows her to be so massive right in behind it. She comes big and thick over her loin edge, comes squared to her pins, and she certainly handles with enough condition for today. Me, I just like to modify her in terms of how she handles her hip and hind leg, level her up in her pins, square her up out of her hock, and pick her up on her pasterns. But certainly a nice female that's fed profitably for the young man. Young ladies have for this to go ahead and round out the class is certainly another long extended type of female. She's level topped. She comes square to her pins, smooth there in her shoulder. For me, I just like to make her deeper and more practical in terms of her rib cage and allow her to feed more effectively through the through the feeding period. But let's give these young exhibitors a big round of applause. Certainly an outstanding class of heifers. Up next in the ring will be division championship for the Sovereign Heifer. First and seconds back in the ring from classes 901 and 902. Speaking of 902, here's the results of the Sovereign Heifers born in 2016. First place, 4619 RTH Eclipse. And it is Rocking T Highlands from Nebraska. Second place, 4620 Almosta Farms Willow. And it's Husker Show Cattle, Nebraska. In third, 4618 Beyond Hope Finley. Beyond Hope Farm, Minnesota. As I mentioned in the ring next, this will be your division championship. Class 901, first place, and 902, first and seconds. We'll pick our grand and reserve grand champion, Sovereign Heifer. The champion banner is sponsored by Highland Acres. And the reserve champion banner is sponsored by Hyde Park Farm. Judge once again, Cody Dubit from Parker, Colorado. Graduate of Colorado State University. Grew up on a seed stock operation where their primary goals was providing heter heterosis options for the commercial producer. Also, mainly, they raised bulls and farm wheat in alfalfa. Currently, he works for Merck Animal Health as a territory sales representative for the southwest corner of Nebraska. Our judge, Cody Dubit, from Parker, Colorado, for the grand champion, reserve grand champion, sovereign heifer selection. We get out here for our division drive and there's certainly a high quality group of females out here in front of me, but there's a heifer out here that hit me really hard when she first came into the ring. The young man's heifer that wins the second class will go ahead and be your division champion. Let's give him a big round of applause. We'll bring a second we bring the second out of that class in here for contention for reserve and you know what i'm just going to go ahead and stick those two pair of heifers together young man out of the second class will go ahead and be your reserve division your grand champion sovereign heifer gets a champion banner sponsored by highland acres that is 4619 rth eclipse rocking t highlands from nebraska the reserve champion will receive a banner sponsored by hyde park farm that is 4620 almosta farms willow Husker Show Cattle from Nebraska. Up next, we'll move to class 903. This is going to be purebred prospect steers born in 2017. 
This is class 903, purebred prospect steers, born in 2017. Birth dates actually are March 7th through July 28th, 2017. This will also be your purebred prospect steer championship. Your champion will receive a banner sponsored by Rock House Run Farm, and the reserve champion will receive a banner sponsored by Cobblestone Farm. Once again, in the ring, class 903, purebred prospect steers, born in 2017, and your purebred prospect steer division championship. Judge once again from Parker, Colorado, Cody Dubit. In this division of purebred prospect steers, I think we've got a real nice steer to lead off the class. You study him at the ground, he's square and wide at his base, carries that up into his knee. That's what allows him to have a round and square turn there to his forerib, sets him up to be dimensional down his top. And then you set this steer into motion, he still reaches on a comfortable stride, sets down a flex and coordination there from his hawk and pastern. Just a real nice prospect steer, the young man's leading out. The young lady that's going to go ahead and be reserved in your division today. I really appreciate the extension and style that this steer brings to the table. He's very laid back in the angle of his shoulder. That's what allows him to project a long front end from here. And I really do appreciate how square this one is in his knee. The reach he has out of his hind leg. A real nice prospect steer the young lady's got. Maybe just give him more coordination in terms of how he handles his hind leg and widen him up there at his hocks. Young lady's black steer that's going to go ahead and be next is certainly a, 
a stylish type of a steer that's clean fronted. He comes strong there behind his shoulder and his bold and his full rib. But I'd just like to level this one out of his hip. I'd like to see him reach with more true flex out of his hock and set down with more comfort and coordination there at his pasturing. But a real nice division of prospect steers. Let's give those young exhibitors a big round of applause for an excellent job. Here's results on Class 903, Purebred Prospect Steers, born in 2017, and your Purebred Prospect Steer for the division. Your grand champion in first place, 46-25, Clearwater Rural, Clearwater Spring Highlands, Brighton, Colorado. The second in the class and reserve grand champion is 46-21, D.I.V. Iceman. And Martha Lang, Colored Rain Ranches from Colorado, Rockville, Colorado. The champion gets a banner sponsored by Rock House Run Farm. Reserve champion gets a banner sponsored by Cobblestone Farm. Third place in the class was 46-22, D.I.V. Maverick. That is Colored Rain Ranches, Rockville, Colorado. Next in the ring will be class 904, Crossbred Prospect Steers. 50% Highland or more, born in 2017. The single entry for the, or the single class for the division. This is be our division championship, Crossbred Prospect Steer. Crossbred Prospect Steer. Champion gets a banner sponsored by Heartland Highland Cattle Association. The reserve champion gets a banner sponsored by Uncle Dave. Once again, this is Class 904 Crossbred Prospect Steers, born in 2017. They had to be 50% Highland or more. And this is also your Crossbred Prospect Steer Division Championship.
Well, this class across of half-blood market prospect steers is certainly a challenging class because there's certainly v many varying different types and kinds throughout the entire lineup. And I keep coming back to this young lady's black-white flank steer to come go ahead and lead off the class. He just fits what we need in terms of practicality, growth, rib shape, skeletal correctness, muscle, and extension. And I still think he presents a stylish, eye-appealing look from the side. You know, maybe we could relax him there in the angle of his shoulder and pick him up behind it and level him out of his hip as he gets into motion. But certainly a nice class, to, nice steer to go ahead and lead off the class. Young man's red steer coming next is super f flexible and sound when you set him into motion. You really have to appreciate the angle of his shoulder, his length of stride up front. Then he's so round and opened up in his full rib, big as you study him and you go right over his loin. He comes square to his pins and sets down with flex out of his hind leg. If you could just make him a little more coordinated and eye appealing as he gets out into motion, he could certainly cut, give that black steer a run for his money. The next black steer coming out is another practical, easy feeding type of a steer that's certainly deep and bold there in terms of his rib shape. And Certainly deep and bold in terms of his rib shape, but if you could pick him up in his front end, level him out of his hip, and just make him a little bit more attractive when you step off to the side, he could certainly work up. Young man's red steer that's gonna go ahead and come out next, one that hits you really hard from the profile when he stopped. Very level topped, very attractive when he set stopped. But when you set him into motion, he just wants to get a bit more upright in the angle of his shoulder and how he handles his knee. He wants to get a bit more restricted out of his hock and pasterns. He could just open him up there in his rib shape, but a very nice profiling steer. Young lady's steer that got a little rambunctious on us and got a little wound up is certainly a long extended steer that's very level down his top and attractive. I'd just like to make him more practical and correct in terms of his rib and skeleton to work that one up. Let's give those exhibitors a big round of applause for an excellent class of prospect steers. Next in the ring will be Class 905 Purebred Feeder Steers born December 31st, 2016 or prior. Here's the results on that last class in division. Class 904 Crossbred Prospect Steers, 50% Highland or more. First place in champion, which will receive a banner sponsored by Heartland Highland Cattle Association, Beyond Hope Easton, Beyond Hope Farm, Minnesota. Second in the class and reserve champion will receive a banner sponsored by Uncle Dave, that is 4630 Almosta Farms Apollo, uh, most of the farm, Nebraska. Third, 4628, Silva's Little Jim, and it's Silva's Highland, LaSalle, Colorado. Fourth in the class, 4629, HSC Jackfire, Husker Show Cattle, Nebraska. As I mentioned, we'll move to this single entry. I know your programs have three entries, but those bottom two go to the next class and division. This is class 905, purebred feeder steers, single entry, and also your purebred feeder steer division championship. Judge, once again, Cody Dubit from Parker, Colorado. Our champion receive a banner sponsored by Northeast Highland Cattle Association.
just got word through Drover's magazine that JBS is going to sell Five Rivers Cattle Feeding for $200 million to Pinnacle Asset Management. That just came through. Breaking news. JBS USA is going to sell Five Rivers Cattle Feeding to Pinnacle Asset Management for approximately $200 million. Five Rivers has got 11 feedlots, total capacity around 980,000 head, largest cattle feeding operation in the world. Just got sold. Got yards in Arizona, Idaho, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, and here in Colorado. Just a single entry in our feeder calf class would certainly a steer that could stand a lot more competition immediately. You just have to appreciate the fundamental of practicality that this steer brings to the table. Very, very relaxed and correct in terms of his skeletal build. Super opened up there in his rib cage, dimensional down his top, thick down his side, thick to his pins, and when he sets into motion, he just gives you a very nice balanced feeder calf type of a look. Let's give this single entry a big round of applause. Up next will be class 906, four entries, crossbred feeder steers, 50% highlight or more. Here's the results going back to class 905, purebred feeder steers, and your division championship for the purebred feeder steer. The champion and first place in the class will receive a banner sponsored by Northeast Highland Cattle Association. That is CRR Nico of NIM, 4632, Colored Rain Ranches, Rockville, Colorado. Those other two entries in that 905 are in this class 906. 50% Highlander Moore, born December 31st, 2016 or prior. Judge once again, Cody Dubit from Parker, Colorado. This is also your Purebred Market Steer Championship. As we look ahead of our program for the Highland Show, we have one more class and division championship in the market steers. Then we move to our junior show, four classes, division championship, then we'll get to showmanship, juniors, intermediate seniors, and we have a senior or a supreme showmanship showdown, and then we've got our group classes. That's what's ahead of us here this evening for our Highland Show. And tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., We'll start the open show, the 30th annual American Highland Cattle Association's National Show open show tomorrow at 8 a.m. right here in the stadium arena. And trust me, folks, you'll want to come back tomorrow morning. We'll have special guests coming in, bagpipes. They'll be playing bagpipes here in the morning and uh, to lead things off and also right in front of our our grand champion selection so if you got time tomorrow would be a great day to come back if you've never seen it it is something to see have the bagpipes leading in our highland show to start things off at 8 a.m in the morning
Well, an excellent, excellent purebred market steer class. And this steer that's going to go ahead and lead off does a lot of things extremely well. Immediately, he hits you with some style and eye appeal and balance when you step off to the side of him. When he's coming at you, he's wide and opened up there in his chest. He's squared his knee. When he goes away, he leaves you dimensional at his pins, still functional and flexible out of his hip and hind leg. But when you really get your hands on him, this guy is big topped. He's big and square behind his shoulder, and he's very fresh to the touch. So he puts it all together for me and, and does a lot of things extremely, extremely well. A very nice champion steer. A young man says to go ahead and be second is another extremely functional type of a steer. Very bold and practical there in his rib, correct in the angle of his shoulder. He's very dimensional when you get your hands over his loin. Now, maybe not the freshest right in there behind his shoulder, and you could give him a little more attractive hip on him, but certainly a steer that when you set him into motion represents what practical fat steers are supposed to look like. Young man's steer that's going to go ahead and come next is a big, heavyweight type of a steer that is still opened up in his rib, practical in terms of his structure, but this steer wants to get a little bit more mature about his front end and chest, maybe a bit more opened up there at the top of his shoulder, but a very, very practical, heavyweight type of a steer. The yellow steer that's going to go ahead and round out the class is certainly long and extended. He's very flexible and comfortable when you set him into motion. But he wants to get a little plainer when you step off to the side of him, maybe a little lower fronted, and could use just a chop more power when you step right in behind him. Let's give those exhibitors a big round of applause for an excellent purebred market steer show. Thank you, Mr. Dubit. Let's get the results here on that last class in division, class 906, crossbred feeder steers. 50% Highland or more, first place, and your champion purebred market steer, which will receive a banner sponsored by Mid Atlantic Highland Association, is 4635. RTH Edge, that is Rocking T Highlands, Nebraska. Second in the class and reserve champion was to receive a banner sponsored by Red River Highland Farm, Wood River Highland Farm, that is 4636, Almosta Farms, Nash, Beyond Hope Farm, Minnesota. Third in the class was 4633, that's from up above, Silva's Homeboy, Silva's Highlands, LaSalle, Colorado. 4634 was fourth, that's Clearwater Walter, Clearwater Springs Highlands, Brighton, Colorado. We move to class 908 in our next division. We have two entries in this division and class. It's 908 crossbred market steers, 50% higher or more, born July 1st, 2015 or later. Two entries. This is also your crossbred market steer d division championship. After this class and division, we'll go to the junior show. Class 773 will be up after this.
Well, since there's only two in this division, I'll go ahead and talk about them briefly before I select your champion of class called the Market Steel. The young ladies love steel. They've seen a standing blue light and thrown them in the seat in the long extended pipe of steel. I really appreciate how it projects a long neck high on the top of a smooth, correct angle of shoulder. He's still round in terms of his full rib, in terms of dimensional to his pins. And when he gets out in motion, he picks his top up and really gives you a nice, balanced look. You know, maybe you could give him a shot more down low in terms of how he carries down into his side from a pretty low front front. But he certainly paints a nice picture from the profile. Young man's black body steel that's good to my left is certainly a big war of heavy muscle, heavy weight market steel. But certainly correctly finished and adequate in that regard. The stuff in behind him is big to his beans, penis, is big over his lawn, and is thick behind his shoulder. You know, this steel wants to
Well, I apologize for taking a little bit longer on this class, but I felt these three young exhibitors brought such high quality females in here. They deserved a little more time to be in the ring to exemplify what they had brought to the National Western Stock Show. You know, an extremely high caliber class of, of true, genuine cow prospects out here. There's three different kinds that you place your own emphasis on what you want to place your emphasis on. For me, the young ladies effort that's going to go ahead and lead off the class brings a tremendous amount of good to the table. She's so hard to fault. She's very stylish about her front end. Just a true cowy feminine maternal front end. So correct in the angle of her shoulder. I truly appreciate how she transitions back into her full rib while staying strong in her top line. She comes level to her pins and she utilizes a very functional and flexible hip and hind leg. And she's just one of those that gets better when you set her into motion. A true cow prospect right there. To take away nothing from the young lady's female, it's going to go ahead and wind up second. Extremely striking. Hit me very hard when she first came into the ring. So fresh and stylish and thin about her neck and how it blends and transitions into a smooth shoulder. She actually comes square at her knee with more base width, but she wants to open up there and nickel at the top of her shoulder. Then she's so massive there in terms of her rib cage. I really appreciate the flex she has to her hind leg. But she maybe just get a little too soft there in her pastern. and I like to relax her in her tail head. But when she stopped, man, she's killer. A very, very high quality female to go ahead and wind up seconds. I commend to you, young lady. Young ladies have for this and to go ahead and wind up third. Cow power, volume, mass, capacity. Huge expansive rib cage, so flexible and functional when you set her into motion. Still a very, very cowy presence, functional, practical, but maybe she's just showing her age a little bit. She may be a little bit deeper there in her chest, a little bit out in her hooks. She wants to duck her pins ever so slightly when you set her into motion. But guys, that class has got me fired up. That was a tremendous high quality class. Let's give those three exhibitors a big round of applause. They deserve it. Coming up in the ring next will be Junior Breeding Heifer Division Championship. We'll be presenting a traveling trophy, by the way, in that next division here. Coming in the ring, here's the results on Class 777. Senior heifers born January 1st through April 30th, 2015. First place, 1097. SFF Dreams Genie, Alexis Washburn from New York. Second, 1098. Sea Winds Time Is Now, Anna Lee May. Dennis, Massachusetts. In third, 1096, SWM Camilla, Miriam May, Massachusetts. This is the Junior Breeding Heifer Division Championship, first and seconds, back in the ring from classes 773 through 777. There'll be a grand champion traveling trophy sponsored by Greg and Linda Markwell that's on the line. We'll pick a champion and a reserve champion. And then after this, we have three showmanship classes that a senior or a Supreme Showmanship Showdown. And then we have our group classes. That's what's up in front of us here in the Highland Show.
again, our judge is Cody Dubit from Parker, Colorado. He's a graduate of Colorado State University. Grew up on a seed stock operation, and their primary goals was providing heterosis options for the commercial producer, along with raising bulls and also farming wheat and alfalfa. Currently, he works for Merck Animal Health as the territory sales representative for the southwest corner of Nebraska. Our judge, once again, Cody Dubit, Parker, Colorado. This is your Junior Breeding Heifer Division Championship. We'll present that traveling trophy. When that selection's made, we'll also pick a reserve. And then after this, we'll have our junior showmanship class, then intermediate, then senior, and then we'll have a supreme showmanship, which will be our champions of those three divisions showing against each other, and then our group classes. Well, let's give all the exhibitors both in the ring, outside the ring, and back in the stalls a big round of applause for a phenomenal and outstanding junior show. You know, I think we got a group of females out here, both first and seconds, that all do one thing extremely well, and that is they all meet the basics of cow fundamentals for a long and longevity of life out in the pasture, outside of the show ring. And yet, they bring to the table those extras in terms of style, eye appeal, balance, to excel in the show ring. So I do want to commend all you young exhibitors, breeders, family members, mentors, for bringing such high quality livestock to the National Western Stock Show. I want to give a little bit of advice to you young exhibitors, as I wasn't in your shoes not but too long ago. Taking an extreme amount of pride in what you do. You brought us some very high quality females all the way to the National Western Stock Show. The most historic, highest quality and prestigious livestock show in the nation and in the world bar none and that is without a doubt take an amount of extreme amount of pride in the hours spent breaking these animals to lead the hours feeding washing working with these animals 
and relish the time spent with your family members, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, grandparents, whoever helped you get to this point. And when you leave this ring, you go back there and give them a big old hug because they are doing it for you, not for them. So let's give these exhibitors another big round of applause. I'll go out and slap my champion. champion junior breeding heifer comes out of class 775 the yearling heifers that's 1093 symbiosis lady otula ellie mitchell mount pleasant michigan that'll move the second in that class into consideration for reserve that's 1092 your grand champion traveling trophy is sponsored by greg and linda markwell that goes to our champion there 1093 bring the second in here out for contention for reserve and the quality and the cow power doesn't drop off a bit let's go give these exhibitors one more big round of applause and I'll shake the hand of the reserve junior female Reserve champion junior breeding heifer comes out of class 777, that's 1097, SFF Dreams Genie, Alexis Washburn, Elmira Heights, New York. We'll move to our showmanship classes. We have three age divisions. Our first age division is 9 to 12. These will be juniors coming in the ring. It'll be class 778, junior showmanship, exhibitors 9 to 12. We'll pick a champion, reserve champion, and then our champion will come back and show against the other two division champions for the Supreme Drive later on. One good thing this year, folks, for those of you who have been here several years, I know they just had the announcement that the barns are being locked down, but we didn't have to put up with that blaring <laughs> sound that we usually have come in the ring. So, Whoever in security is in charge of shutting us off for that, we appreciate it. We still got quite a bit of show left to go here. So we got junior showmen in the ring next, then intermediates, then seniors. Looks like we got a picture break. So I'm going to try to bring up something here that we usually do every year during picture breaks for our Highland show.
Not coming in the ring. This will be our Junior Showmanship, Class 778. Exhibitors 9 to 12. Junior Showmanship. Our judge, once again, Cody Dubit from Parker, Colorado.
Well, let's give our junior showman a big round of applause. They're all out here having a good time. I'll let you guys know what I asked them. I asked them how many years they've been showing, and I also asked them what they want to do when we grow up. We got two future farmers or ranchers out here, a veterinarian and a hockey player. I bet you guys can't guess which one's the hockey player. But back to, <laughs> you would be correct. Back to the show, there's one young man out here who was doing a smoking good job in the junior show. He's doing a smoking good job right now. The young man in the blue shirts and a beer champion junior showman. Let's give him a big round of applause. Excellent, excellent job. From there, it gets closer. We got some different experience levels and different techniques to getting them stuck. But the young lady's going to go ahead and be reserved. She does a very nice job maintaining control of that calf, getting that calf set up. Maybe we could work on walking him into place a little bit so we don't have to mess with his feet as much. But a very nice job. Let's give these young exhibitors a big round of applause and excellent junior showman. Results of our junior showmanship for the Highland. These are exhibitors aged 9 to 12. Your champion, who will be competing in the Supreme Showmanship in just a few classes, he's 11-01. Gavin Holmes, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Your reserve champion, 11-02. Amelia Jancourt, Inver Grove Heights, Minnesota. Congratulations. Good job to the entire class. Give them one more round of applause as they exit the ring. Our next class will be intermediates. These are exhibitors 13 to 17. We've got quite a class here. I think there's 14. I went to Briggsdale, so my math may be wrong. Let me count them here again. Yep, 14. So 14 exhibitors coming in for intermediate showmanship. This will be class 779. Bragging rights on the line. And we've got some junior awards sponsored by Almosta Farm. Also for the juniors, that junior showmanship. Benachi Farms, Bull Run Farm, Cobblestone Farm, Dan Utter, Dundalum Farm, Husker Show Cattle, Windmere Farm. Windermere Farm. Your, let's see here. Champion Reserve Showmanship Premiums are sponsored by Star Lake Cattle Company. Our champion in that junior, Gavin Holmes of Cheyenne, Wyoming, he gets 100 bucks. And the reserve in that division, Amelia Jankwart, she gets $50. So they got some cash. And that's what's on the line here in the intermediates as well. Bragging rights and 100 bucks for champion, 50 bucks reserve, once again sponsored by Star Lake Cattle Company. And our whole junior awards are sponsored by Almosta Farm, Benachi Farms, Bull Run Farm, Cobblestone Farm, Dan Utter, Dundonnell Farm, Husker Show Cattle, and Windermere Farm. This is your intermediate showmanship. Our judge, once again, Cody Dubit, Parker, Colorado.
Back on that junior showmanship, we also want to uh, congratulate and recognize the other two in the ring. They were Wyatt Hall and Garrett Hall, both of Brighton, Colorado. Good job on participating in showmanship. That's where it all starts. The judge didn't uh, place those, but he did pick our champion reserves. Just want to make sure we recognize those two. Okay. She's good. She's going back in.
Let's give these intermediate showmen a big round of applause. As we were working through the show, I figured this, in, this age division in showmanship was going to be extremely tough, and it is. And to you exhibitors, I truly commend you on your showmanship ability. It shows that you put a tremendous amount of work, time, and effort in at home to get them to be able to show like this when you come to the National Western. Out here, the top five for me, you know, they all do things extremely well. They come in the ring and they command your attention. They're all staring me down. It's kind of intimidating, I will admit that. It's kind of intimidating. They do a tremendous job getting their animals presented to the best of their ability. They get them stuck, they get them shown, heads up, out in front of them, showing off the best views of their animal. You know, showmanship is a challenging thing from a judge's perspective because like we have out here, we have five tremendous individuals and it can go any way. It just comes down to one man's opinion on one day. Any day, anything can happen. Anything can happen on any day. So before I go out and select your champion senior showman, let's, or intermediate showman, excuse me, let's give all these individuals a big round of applause for a phenomenal and challenging showmanship drive. I can tell you your champions, 1107, Riley McConnell, Malaton, Minnesota. Picking a champion is hard, but picking a reserve is even harder for me. Let's give him one more big round of applause. I gotta finish making up my mind. Congratulations to all you need to be a showman.